Well, good morning to you guys. So glad to have y'all with us this morning. And I know the Cowboys aren't playing until next week, but I figure if we start praying now, we might have a chance, you know, we'll, but faith without works is dead. That's all I'm saying, all right? But we are, hey, we are so glad that you made it out here today. And if this is your first time being here with us at Lake Country, I want to say you're indeed our special guest. Thank you for making it out. Do us a favor, like Josh talked about earlier, you can either fill it out online or in front of you, the seat back in front of you, there is what we call the Connect card. And that just give us some information about yourself on your way out. Put it in the offering buckets here or in the offering boxes in the back, but just let us know that you made it. Those join us online, so glad to have you guys with us as well. If this is your first time being here with us, come at a great time. We have been in a series called Get in the Game. And what we've been talking about is, we're talking about you can be, come to the game, you can be for a game, or you can be in the game. And last week we talked about getting in, part of getting in the game was being in church, is being here. Can I just tell you this? We're glad you're here. We, we want you to be here. We want you to be a part of what God is doing here in this place. And we want you to be, I want you to hear this word, we want you to be connected. We want you to be connected in a healthy, we want you to be connected in this church in the proper way. You know, so many people are not connected to a church. Especially right after the pandemic. That just messed with so many people. Now, I know we got people, and probably those that are maybe watching at home right now saying, but Scott, can't I be fed at home watching this online? Can't I watch this on Facebook? Can't I watch this on YouTube? Can't we watch this online and can I be fed that way? The answer is absolutely. But can I tell you something? But you're not connected the way you're supposed to be connected. Now, have you ever seen, you ever seen somebody transporting an organ to a hospital? You ever see, do you know what they carry it in? Right? They're carrying it in a little cooler. Sitting here going, oh, yeah, I got beer in the back and I got a heart right here. I mean, they're carrying it in, in, a, in a cooler. And many times what they've got now is they've got all these cables and everything that are connected to it because it's keeping that heart, that liver, that lung, whatever it is, it's keeping that organ fed. Now, is that organ being fed? Yes, it is. But is that organ where it's supposed to be? You see, that organ may be being fed, but it's not blessing the body the way that it's supposed to. And we got so many people, listen, I, yes, can you worship Jesus at home? Absolutely. You can worship Jesus in a deer blind. You can worship Jesus on a golf course, amen? But that blessing that's taking place at that point is for you. And here's my question. How are you ministering to the rest of the body? Because if I read it correctly in 1 Corinthians 12, the Bible talks about the church being the body of Christ. And I've yet to see a finger going down the highway by itself and think, that's healthy. We want you to be a part of this house. Now, if you do decide to be a part, let me give you spoiler alert real quick, real quick. Ministry is mess. Ministry is messy. The church isn't perfect. We are all a little crazy. God is really good. And you're relentlessly loved. Just want to give you the heads up about that real quick. Now, we continue talking about getting into the game. We, we do. We want you here. We want you to be a part. We need you in the game, not just to be about the game, not to just be for the church, but to be inside, to be a part. And the thing is, we want your heart here. We don't want you just to attend. We want you to have your heart be a part of what God's doing here. Now, I'm sharing this with other people, but you know, our, one of our elders, Pat Six, man, he's a big fan, Texas Tech, right? His heart's there. Why? Because he went there. And, uh, man, the Lions, man, 
their, their, their hearts with Texas A&M. Why? Because they went there. Me and Renee, our hearts are with LSU. And people could say, Scott, you didn't go there. No, but my money did. Y'all with me? Yeah, listen, there is a connection that takes place to wherever you put your finances. I mean, and we're still putting finances there, okay? And so there is a connection between where you put your finances. The, the scripture even talks about it. The scripture even says this. The Bible says, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. So can I tell you something real quick? We do want your heart here. Today, today as we continue our series on um, getting the game, Today we're doing a, a message called Coach's Corner. And what I want to do as coach here with our team, with our, with our family, is I want to talk about the issue of giving. Now, no, no, stay with me. I want you to hear something real quick. I'm not going to apologize for this message. Because if we understand giving, we understand finances the way God teaches us, you're going to see it in a different way. I was at a church several years ago, went in there, I was going to speak at this church, and it was an incredible service. It was like today with Ethan, man, just took us under the presence of God. The people were, were friendly and loving. I mean, it was a wonderful church service. And then all of a sudden, right before the message, one of the pastors gets up, and he goes, well, all the other pastors got all the cool things to do. And I guess they left me having to do the uh, offering. And seriously, I wanted to run up and punch that guy in the throat in love. <laughs> because he was apologizing for taking the offering. Do, do y'all know that if Jesus wrote about, if the Word of God talks about heaven... 500 times. There are over 500 times that the, the topic of heaven is talked about in the Bible. 500. That's kind of important, wouldn't you say? If something was written about 500 times. Do you know that giving, offering, tithes, and possessions are talked about over 2,000? So if God talks about that issue over 2,000 times, there's something important there for us to look at. Now, I'll tell you this, the, the reality, the reality is simply this. Well, in fact, I, I want to get you guys in the Word. You guys got your Bibles with you this morning. You got those? Hold them up, hold them up, hold them up. Good, 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 good. Thank you, man. I'm glad you got. Turn over, if you would, to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to be in verse 19 here in a minute. But here's what I want to share with you all this morning. First off, I want you to hear this. Um, Reality is that most people don't give in church. Now, hear me. That's not a judgment. That's an observation. Okay? Um, I read a, read a study. It was a five-year study that was done in 2013. And inside of that study of studying churches across the board, different denominations, different parts of the world, the, the study came up and it showed this, that only 10 to 25% of people inside of any given church give. Now, when I read that, I thought, well, man, that's 2013. That's a little bit old. And so I kept digging and I kept researching, and I started finding more up-to-date uh, messages, <laughs> up-to-date studies, and I found one that was done in 2021, and it says the exact same thing, that 10 to 25% of an entire church give. Now, here's the thing. That means that 75 to 90% of the people in an average church are missing out on the blessings that God speaks about in his word. If, if those numbers are accurate, if tithing, then, then if tithing is a part of discipleship, that means that only 10 to 25% of people inside of a church are experiencing that kind of discipleship. That means if you're missing out on giving in the church, then you're missing out on the opportunities to grow and mature in Christ. So, today in Coach's Corner, man, we're going to talk about giving. 
But let me, let me say this real quick because I want you to see my heart. This message today is not to beat you into giving. Will y'all hear that? This message is to spur you onto growth. <laughs> and if you're new here today, <laughs> welcome to day one at Lake Country, right? You're like, really, hon? We picked today to go for the first time, right? <laughs> but can I tell you why? If, if this is your first time here today, can I tell you why? I'm so glad you're here on this day. Because you're going to see what this church is really about. You, my hope is that at the end of this, first timer, I, I hope by the end of this you go, I think that pastor actually does love his people. I hope at the end of this you go, wow, this really is a church that believes in the word of God. I hope by the end of this you're sitting here going, wow, they really do want to shepherd their people and mature their people into everything God has in store for them. So if today is your first day and we're talking about giving, we're glad you're here. Let's ask this question. Can we ask this question? And again, please know, I'm not trying to beat you into giving. I'm trying to spur you on toward growth. So let's ask this question. Why is it people don't give? Stay with me. I was reading an article not too long ago, and it addressed this question. Why don't people give in the church? And the very first thing that it said, the very number one thing it said was this. Some don't believe. Stay with me. If you're taking notes, Scott, what do you mean they don't believe? Well, what if you don't believe that Jesus really is the Son of God? What if you don't believe that Jesus came from heaven, put on flesh and blood? What if you don't believe that Jesus actually took all of your jealousy, your bitterness, your lust, your envy. He took on the sins of all mankind upon his shoulder, died on a cross so that by him putting on our unrighteousness, you and I could put on his righteousness. That's a beautiful thing, but he, understand me, if you don't believe, well, you might as well give your money to the United Way or to the Elks Lodge. That way you can get your tax right off and get a nice little warm fuzzy for forgiving. See, some people, according to this article that I read, some people may not give because they don't believe about this Jesus. But see, stay with me. There's also the, what if some don't believe? Well, don't believe what? Don't believe what this word says. What if there are some people who, Scott, the reason I don't really give is because I, I don't know if I believe what this book actually says inside of here. Well, what does it say? Well, if you're taking notes, Luke 6.38 is going to say this, and this is actually a principle that God's talking about in all things. Um, but it says this, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Proverbs 3, 9 says this, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Malachi 3.10. Malachi 3.10 says this, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in your house, and thereby put me to a test. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you got to hit pause right there. Because in other places inside of the Word of God, God says, don't put me to a stupid test. But right here in this passage, this is the only place in the entire Bible that God says this, test me. Test me. What's he telling us to test on? He says this, this is the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven, Open them for you, and I will pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Do you believe? Do you believe what this book says? Because one of the values here at this church, one of the values of Lake Country Church is, we say this, follow the word. 
follow the word. What does that mean? We believe this. But, oh, but we don't just say we believe it. We do it. You see, James, the apostle James, he wrote this book called James. Real original. But he wrote this book in the book of James. Can I tell you this? The book of James is a book of maturity. And what James is pointing out in one of his chapters, he's talking about faith and works working together. And he's saying, look, there are some people that go, well, dude, I got faith. Really? Show me. In fact, this is what the passage says in James chapter 2, verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. UCLA basketball great coach, John Wooden, who they called the, the, the Wizard of Westwood. You know anything about coach? He had seven consecutive NCAA championships. I think he had like 12 total, but I know he had seven years in a row. Coach Wooden had that. He was the uh, great dynasty of the college sports over at UCLA. Coach Wooden would say this. He made this quote. He said, nothing works unless you do. James would say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. Get in the game. So for some people, maybe it's that you don't believe. Why don't people give? Well, I, I would tell you this. I, I think some people don't know why. <laughs> why, why. Why do we give? I mean, understand that, that just because <laughs> maybe you're here at this church and you would say, Scott, we've been coming here to Lake Country and, you know, we came that first week and then we came a second time and this is the third time. And, and well, just because you, you've come, that doesn't mean you understand everything of the values we have of this church. Or maybe, maybe you've just come to Christ. Maybe you've just believed. You've just entered into a relationship with Jesus. Understand something. Listen, just because you've invited Jesus into your heart, that doesn't mean you understand it all. That's why Jesus said, he, he never said, it's an event. Jesus said, follow me. Why? Because they're so much to learn. In marriage, so my boys are at this age. My oldest boys are both married, and they're already at the point where they're having friends who are already talking about getting divorced. And it breaks my heart because there's so many that will go into this marriage thing, and tell me if I'm missing this because we've probably all been there, and we think we got it all figured out. I remember my boys when they were little asking me, Dad, help me understand girls. And I would just look at them and say, good luck. <laughs> Can I say this to young marrieds in this room? That's why we say till death do us part. You know why? Because that's how long it's going to take you to figure it out. And can I say this also? In following Jesus. That's why it takes us eternity in following Jesus to get it figured out. So when we ask the question, what's tithing for? What's, what's the purpose of us giving? Well, let, let me give you just a couple here real quick. First off, an um, article that I read by Dave Ramsey, he talked about giving and he said this, the Bible tells us that tithing is a way to show that we trust God with our lives and with our finances. Can I tell you what else I like about us giving? It helps you be aware of other people's needs. Another reason for tithing, if you're, you're taking notes going, dude, why do you want us to give? Man, here's, here's some list. Um, first off, supporting the needs of of a ministry and the work of a local church, both here and globally, is one of the main purposes of tithing. Don't know if you know this, 
but our church here in Lake Country, we, we tithe. Everything that comes in financially to our church, 10% of it goes out. So we believe in what God's doing here, but we also believe what God's doing in India. We also believe in what God's doing in Bangladesh. There's some incredible work that's being blessed because of the giving of this church. So we believe in that. I would tell you this also. Tithing, giving, it's a step of faith. Can I just go ahead and say that? Because there's some of you in this room, tell me if I'm missing this. There's some of you in the room, you're just waiting for God to give that warm, fuzzy feeling and just this like, boom, oh, there it is, I'm supposed to give. Okay? That's not God, that's static electricity. All right? So when, when we tithe, when we give, that is a step of faith. Can I share with you a funny story that happened to me this week? I... um. I was on the phone with the doctor's office. It wasn't about me. It was one of our, our friends. And uh, I get the receptionist. We're talking on the phone. We work all this stuff out. I'm always looking for opportunities to talk about Jesus. Right? Give me a cracked door. Just, just give me just a little space to get in there. And we get through with the conversation talking with this receptionist. And she goes, well, Mr. Crenshaw, is there anything else I can do for you today? And I was like, ah, that's a door. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, you can write the second half of my sermon. And she goes, love this. Ready? You ready? She goes, well, what's it about? <sighs> but you know what I told her? I, I was actually going to go a different direction than, than where we're at today. And I told her, I said, well, you know what the message is about? The message is about how when God took the children of Israel out of slavery and captivity, and he started taking them into the promised land. Because God never just takes us out of something, he takes us into something. And so, and, and she's going, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even there yet. And I said, I said, but when God took the children of Israel out of slavery and captivity, he took them into the promised land, there were all these cities, and God said to them, hey, all these cities, they've got gold and silver, and they got donkeys and goats, and it's all yours. Every one of those different cities, they're yours. There's one city that I want, one city, Jericho. And I said to her on the phone, I said, now, Jericho wasn't even the biggest city. Why did God want Jericho over all of those other cities? And she goes, I don't know. And I said, I don't know. Could it be because it was the first city? And to give God the first is a step of faith. I said to her, I want you to picture all these people, they were slaves. They had a poverty mentality. And they came out of Egypt and God was trying to get Egypt out of them. And what God did was he took them to that first city, and there was the first city. Can you imagine the first time they won that city? God gave them the victory. And, man, here was gold and silver. Here was all these beautiful things. And they're like, get out of here. And they're seeing it everywhere. Don't you know? Tell me if I'm missing this. Don't you know inside of their minds they're going, what if this doesn't happen again? You better get what you can right now because there may not be another. There may not be enough. You better, I, I know God said this city is marked for him. But what if there's not enough? I better take some. To understand, can I just go ahead and get all spiritual on you and tell you? Tithing's a spiritual thing. And it requires faith. Why, why don't people give? Well, for some, they don't understand what it's going toward. They don't understand what it's for. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 tells us another reason, and I love this, okay? This is one of the reasons that we give. Matthew 6, 19, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven 
where moths and vermins do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart also is. What's he saying? He's saying this. There's a bank account in heaven. Are you overdrawn? Anybody, anybody getting the NSF checks? Anybody? anybody? Paul puts even a little bit clearer. Talking about that what we do for kingdom when we give. A record of that is kept in heaven. There was a time when Paul was writing a letter to these people called the Philippians. And they had sent him money. And Paul was thanking them, but at the same time, he was saying to them, hey, guys, listen, I'm not writing this letter to you to say I need more money. He said, what I'm saying is, well, let me just read it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 17, not that I desire your gift. What I desire is that more may be credited to your account. That's not at Chase. That's in heaven. And we're going to get there and God's going to say this, okay? First off, can, can I give some people some relief in this room? Because I know we always get these cartoon versions of what heaven's going to look like, judgment day. Can I say this real quick to all the sons and daughters of God? Can I say this to all the people who've asked Jesus into their life and are following Christ? That's not going to happen. We're not going to have that kind of judgment day. Why? Because we're going to walk up and God's going to go, blood of the lambs covering that one, move on. But can I tell you what, listen, listen, I'm talking to believers real quick. But can I tell you what we will experience? God's saying, what did you do with what I gave you? We will give an account to that. So, number three, number three, I want to ask you this question. Why is it that we don't give up? I got to give this quote, though. Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight, who was basketball coach for Army, for Indiana, and yes, for Texas Tech. And I'm sorry about that game yesterday. I thought you'd be down here for ministry time for sure. But anyway, that's a side note. Bobby Knight said this. Listen, and I want you all to grab hold of this. He says, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. So can I say this to us? If we're going to give... If we're going to grow as people of God, as we're going to grow as sons and daughters of God, give with a thankful heart. Give and say, God, thank you for what you've done. Because like Knight said, nothing great has ever been done without enthusiasm. Kid you not, I was at a church one time. Service was great. Worship was life-giving. Message, fantastic. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the message, a guy gets up there and goes, just chill. He was just chilled. Walks up there and goes, Let's take an offering. And the place erupted. People started celebrating. If you're going to give, give with that thankful heart. And let me say this also. Even if you don't give with a thankful heart, give anyway. Okay. <laughs> number three. Number three. This is, this is going to hit home with some. Some are in a difficult financial season. When a lot of us older people were young, we thought life was just going to be like that. You grow, you get better, bigger house, bigger job. It just, and what did we learn? It's a roller coaster. And I understand this. I understand that there are difficult financial seasons in life. For me and Renee, if Renee came home and she smelt and saw Red beans and rice on the stove. She knew, don't spend anything. We're done. <laughs> Financially, there's no more. There's red beans and rice on the stove. Stop spending. That's what that was. I want to, in love, I want to set some of you free in this room. Because I don't want you to beat yourself up. I don't want you to take hold of the enemy's condemnation. I don't want you to take hold of the enemy's shame. Listen to what the Word of God says. Scripture is simply going to tell us this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12, if the willingness is there, 
The gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Somebody get free today. We're not talking about what you want to be able to give. That's faith. What God is looking at, what is it that you do have that you're able to bring? Let's not talk about, well, but I'm not giving this. I'm not giving that. I'm not. Well, what do you have to give? Rip open the chest cavity, let you guys know something. I, I have access as senior pastor to all of our financial records. Right? I need to. I don't spend a whole lot of time hanging out there. But I tell you, people that I do look at their giving. You know who that is? Our staff. I look at our staff and I look at our leaders. Why? Because wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And I want our staff, I want their hearts here. I want our leaders. If they're going to lead here, I want their heart to be here. So I do. I, I, I look at their giving record. Now, let me just share this. I've had times where I would call in a staff, and I remember this very vividly. This one young man, his name was Chad, one of our staff members. And I was looking through our staff, and I saw a man that Chad and his household, man, they hadn't given in months. And I called Chad into the office. I said, hey, can we meet? And he came in, and he sat down. I said, Chad, I just need to ask you a question, because I want you to understand something. It was not me standing, pointing a finger, going, dude, what's your deal? Man, we, no, no. The enemy already does that enough. We don't need more condemnation inside of the house of God. So I just looked at Chad and I said, Chad, is everything okay? And can I tell you what happened? Chad started tearing up. And Chad started sharing with me this difficult season that he and his whole family were in that I knew nothing about. Can I tell you what we did as a church? The church, we jumped in. And we helped Chad and his family out. But to be able to look and listen and go, what's the situation? Because for some, it may be, I'm in this season. Can I tell you something? You may be on your way to the promised land, but on the way to the promised land, there's some ugliness along the way. And there's some difficult seasons, amen? John Madden. The older people in this room go, coach. Younger people go, video game. <laughs> John Madden made this statement about the journey. He simply said this, the road to easy street goes through the sewer. We're going to have those difficult times, so can I encourage you? Don't concentrate on what you don't have. Be faithful with what you do. Number four, I'm going to finish up here. Go ahead and get the worship team to go ahead and come up. I would say this, some don't know how. Some don't know how to give. Well, God, how do y'all do it here? Well, you may have seen earlier during the worship. During worship, why? Because giving is part of worship. It is, God, I am bringing you my best. I'm not bringing you my leftovers because that's not faith. God, I'm bringing you my best. And maybe what you saw, you saw people coming up here and they had their checks or they had envelopes. And you know what they're doing? They're bringing their tithes and offerings to God. They're bringing the first fruits of their labor to the storehouse of God. And, and that's why you saw some of the people up here. They were bringing those things. God, I'm bringing this to you. Now I would tell you this. Some people are going, ah, I'm not comfortable with that. Okay. Well, we've also got, man, throw that QR code up there. We've also got other ways. Uh, if you want to go online, we, we, we've got an app. Go to this. It will take you. To, I think this one's the website, isn't it? This is the website, and you're able to get on the website. We also have a church app that we utilize that you're able to give on there. If you want to come by the office, if you want to go online, there's all these different ways to give. Finally, I would tell you this. Why don't we give? Could it be that some of us look around the room, we see a little bit larger church, and we think this. 
Others will do it. Others will give. We had prepared the house, and well, Scott, we didn't really give because I kind of figured everybody else would. Can I tell you honestly? If those stats are true and 10 to 25% of our church are the givers, then no, somebody else is not giving in your place. What would it look like if our church, our, our families, our body started saying, God, I want to be faithful, not, in, not only in my worship to you with my tithes and offerings, God, as a disciple, Because to me, giving is a discipline. And it's part of being a disciple. And it's a learning process, right? You don't come to Jesus and go, oh, giving, that makes sense. Oh, scripture, yes, it all is clear to me now. No, that's why we say follow Jesus together. But what would it look like if it wasn't 10 to 25% of the church gave. What would it look like if the entire body was connected and moved in harmony with God's agenda? To be able to call up our friend in India, Raj, say, Raj, all those children in India who have been discarded and left in the streets, and you brought them into your village, and you're raising them, you adopted them, and Raj, you know how you came here, and you shared with us that you wanted to build a school for those children and so many more. Hey, Raj, we want to cover it. What would that look like? What would it look like if locally... We were able to call up Community Link and say, hey, there's a really big check we want to give you guys. We want to love on those single moms here in our city. We want to impact lives of people that don't even have the right necessities to be able to sustain themselves. What would it look like if in this church, all of a sudden the body started getting in the game financially and we were able to start ministries that we've been wanting to see. We can start a deliverance ministry and more discipleship taking place and we can bring in more staff to be able to help lead us. What would it look like? For some, there's still the temptation to go, but others will do it. But you'll miss out. you to miss out on what is and is going to happen. George Hollis was a coach of the Chicago Bears and in his second season of being head coach he took the Bears to the NFL championship in 1921. George made this statement, and I'll leave you this today. Nobody who ever gave his best regretted it. Bow your heads with me.